I usually just eyeball it. I mean, you'd be surprised how good uh, God made us able to just look at something and balance it right. I mean, you almost don't really need to look at a bubble is what I'm getting at, to level it. I usually look at a head on, get a good idea. Uh, you'd be surprised how good you can get. Unfortunately, I don't have a deer that's not skin out yet to show you. I made this video before and it got completely deleted. And what it is, is the video was how to accurately set your antlers accurately every time. Uh, first try. First measurement is usually, what I do is I write on a piece of paper. And then later, you know, when I'm mounting it, transfer the dimensions to the form so I don't have to keep running back to my paperwork, um, you know, for all my measurements. But a lot of times, I go like to the end of the nose, and I may even look from the side to kind of like get my end of the nose measurement. But I'll go, I'll like maybe, I might take two or three on each side. You know, not, like if it's a 20 pointer, you know, you wouldn't want to do them all, really. But like from the G1, you know, this is making believe the deer hadn't been skin out yet. I go from like the G1 to the tip of the nose, and, you know, uh, get a measurement. Uh, looks like this one is right at uh, about 17. So I run over to my notes and write down that measurement. It looks like in reality, it was, that was my G1, 16 and 3 fourths. You know, of course, that's not accurate right there. But, okay, my first measurement, 16 and 3 fourths. Okay, the G2 is 22 and 13 16th. What it is is I just go, you know, I'll put this on the end of the end of the tip and go down to the end of the nose. In this case, this looks like 23 and 1 fourth or something like that. The real measurement off the deer was these are measurements taken before I saw the antlers off the deer before I even skin him out. These are measurements off the fresh deer. And and I get those measurements. What it is is the antler tip to the end, the G1 antler tip to the end of, end of the nose, the G2 antler tip to the end of the nose, G3 antler tip to the end of the nose, G4 antler tip to the end of the nose on the right side. Left side did the same thing. G1, G2, G3, G5, okay? You know, just get enough to get a good accurate measurement and then you replicate it onto the onto the form. And what it is is you bond the antlers to the form, you know, because everything lines up. Okay. Now after I wish I had a real deer to show you. The first video had this, but it got deleted somehow. I don't know if I did it, you know, maybe having my phone in my pocket or something. Not sure what happened, but it, it got deleted. And uh, it's a shame. But anyway, now the what I mean by the eye to the back of the burr is, you see the right is one and a half, left is one and three fourths. Uh, after I skin the deer out, this is the measurement that I get after I skin the deer out, is from the back corner of the eye, Like on this one, it's about right here, like the back back center corner of the eye, somewhere in that range. Um, I'll get my measurement from about the middle of the middle of the burr, somewhere in that range. Sometimes I'll mark it for accuracy, and I'll go to the back corner of the eye and get a measurement. And although this isn't accurate, looks like we got one and way up or down. I think this one actually in reality is like an inch and a half. So now I'm gonna get the deer accurate by using these measurements. But the key is when you before you skin the deer out and you get your eye to nose measurement when you order your deer you want to make sure you don't deviate from that eye to nose measurement where it throws off all these other measurements. So make sure your eye to nose measurement 
is accurate when you buy your form. You want the eye to nose measurement to be the same as what's on your deer. Um, I guess if you need to go a little bit longer, you have to add that little bit of length to all your dimensions. But if you get your eye to nose accurate, it makes life a lot easier. Antler tip to the end of the nose, to the center of the end of the nose. That was like 17 inches. And that's the farthest one out. One, two, three, four. I guess the G4. There's a G5 on the other side. Do each, like do your G1s, G2s, V3s, G4s, so on and so on. Do it for your right antler tip, or right antler, and then do it for your left antler. You know, you can use math to get your antlers perfect the first time. There you go. Right antler, G1 to G2. Uh, I know that this is off definitely, but this one's saying 17. No, actually a little more, like 17. So in that range. For the G1, you do the same thing. This is before you skin your deer out, you do this. And the G2, like 23, and 23 and a quarter. Uh, and you do this one. Uh, looks like 21 and somewhere in that way. 21 three fourths. Now you get it like within the ballpark. And, okay. and that is uh, 21, 21 and a half. That would be the one two. The G3 on the left antler. Okay. You get all your measurements like that. This measurement is one you take after you skin your deer out and before you cut the antlers off. You get this one measurement, center of the bird to the back corner of the eye. Uh, this is, says inch and three quarters, but I know it's like an inch and a half. And the other side is, I think I wrote it down, I think it's like an inch and three quarters. At about 80% of the time, it's an inch and three quarters. Uh, it's just the way deer are made, it seems like, in this area, you know. Although it can vary greatly. Sometimes they can vary very greatly. But now I'm gonna saw the antlers to match all, all the dimensions that I wrote down from that deer, you know, from before I skin him out to the eye to the back corner of the eye measurements. After I skin him out, I've got it all wrote down. You can see it right here. And you can even replicate them you, instead of looking back at your paperwork, a lot of times I'll write them on the back of the uh, back of the deer. That way, that way, I don't have to keep running backwards and forwards to my paperwork. It's just a lot easier just to write it on the deer. That way, you can just glance down, glance up, and you're good to go. But like here on the this is the right side. Let's see, out of her. Uh, or, or I can just go, I can even write it right here, but it's, uh, I mean, I know what it means. Okay, on the right side, one and a half. One and a half. Then you put an arrow up there and an arrow down there. You know, one and a half. Kind of like the center of the burr. I just kind of eyeball it to the back corner of the eye. A lot of times it's an inch and three quarters. Then I'll do like, okay, this is the right side. My, okay, G1, G1 equals 16 and 3 fourths. G2, twenty twenty two and 13 16 is what I got.
Then you do the other side the same way. That way when you're setting your antlers, you might be holding your antlers in place or whatever and with a measuring tape in the other hand or something. Um, they set up perfect every time. Obviously, I got to do a little bit more cutting on that. But do the other side the same way and your deer antlers will come out perfect every time. I already know I've got to cut some off the bottom, so I'm going to try to probably even those out a little bit, maybe cut a little bit more off. I don't want to worry about getting too close. I've got Bondo to help me out. Uh, you know, if I'm a little bit off on my cutting, which I always am. Sometimes I hold it at a corner. I've gotten where I like to hold them. Yeah, about like that. Try to go even as I can on both sides. Uh, kind of start a track with it. So I cut the bottom off a little bit. Uh, see what she fits like. Oh yeah, it's a lot better. Oh yeah, you also want the school plate to match up with the top of the form. And you want to get pretty close on that measurement. Just letting you know. So I'll go back to my measurements. They're already wrote down on the deer. So let's see how close I am. Okay, we got the, the G1 is 16 and 3 fourths. May not be too close, maybe real close. On the money, we're getting pretty close. You figure, okay, the G1 on the right side, 16 3 4, so there's a center, about right in the middle. It's about right there. It's pretty close. Let's see the next measurement, G2. Uh, let's check the back corner of the eye, too. See, the, the middle of the form has a little bit of a point or a ridge. And the ridge falls right to the school plate. So that's why you have a kind of a seamless look, you know, on your deer when he's done. You see the eye, eye to the back, the bird in the back corner of the eye is an inch and a half on this side. And it is inch and a half. I mean, you have to kind of subtract the, uh, You know that, but back corner of the eye is definitely inch and a half. Can you see it? Okay. That's perfect. I'll check the other side. Other side is inch and three quarters uh, to the back corner of the eye. Uh, a little bit high. That's like two inches on that side. Let's see what the other measurements are. Okay, that is... Okay. I guess I can turn the deer around. Hold on. Well, then after sawing and all that stuff, the times matched up. I didn't, didn't have to cut any more. I bondo it down, drill my screw holes, shoot my screw holes into it, and take my screw holes out and then I'll get a knife or something. I usually put a little bit of preservative or something there so it doesn't stick so hard that the antlers don't pop back off. Uh, so basically, I'd love to show you, but I've already done it once and it got deleted. Um, but you drill, I like to drill five screw holes, two in the front, two in the back, and one in the middle. And after I sit it down on my Bondo and keep it in place, with the time measurements, a lot of times I'll hold it like this and use my measuring tape to measure the tips of my antlers to the end of my nose and see if it matches up with my measurements. And I hold it till the bongo gets hard. Then I drill my five screw holes, shoot, shoot my screws even down into it. A lot of times I'll put like little pilot holes. I'll put a little bit of a, I don't know what you call it, 
but I want the head to sink and mesh down to the end of the spool. And uh, a lot of times I just use an oversized drill bit on top. That way it makes a seat, you know, for the screw head. I usually just do the two front ones, sometimes the center one. And don't even worry about the back ones. And then it's in the video, you know. I, after I pop them back off and I'm ready to mount my deer, you know, I put my hide paste on, I sand my form down a little bit so the hide paste fit ears, put my cape back on, put my antlers back on, and it's all in the video. Then I'll build up around the corners to make it look like it was before the antlers were cut off. And then I do my sewing up the back and all that. But that's how you set your antlers, just use your measurements. Um, the middle of the bird to the back corner of the eye is a good one. Make sure the skull cap is matching up with the top of the skull cap on the form. And make sure all your time links match up to what your deer really had before you skin him out. You know, the G1, G2, G3, 4s and 5s. And uh, make sure they're up, they all line up on both sides. And your antlers are set. You don't have to do anything. Uh, you use the math. Uh, you, you put your measurements are accurate, your eye, your in, the inside corner of your eye and then your nose is accurate. Everything is just like it was before you skin the deer out and he looks good. Now for the skull cap, I, I cut this uh, wood wool, or they call it excelsior. I just get however much I need, get me a pair of scissors or shears or something. Cut it. And I'll get a little, a little of my Bondo and some hardener. Start mixing it together. Let's see. Yeah, you just mix it together. Put your hardener in it. And what I'll do is I'll fill the skull cap up with it. And then uh, put it to the form. Let it draw on the form. I'll make sure I got a little bit of like preservative. Um, I'll show you that a little bit in a minute. Let's mix it up real good. And apply it to the skull cap and then some on the form also. Put a little Bondo with my Excelsior uh, mixed together, a little bit of hardener, and then I put it on here. I've got all my measurements, so I just kind of try to match up my skull plate with my. with my antlers and want them to ride you know kind of well about like that actually and this we got uh, I'll look down the end of the nose make sure everything's lined up good make sure my antlers are looking good uh, G1 to the end of the nose uh, on the left is a uh, uh, 16 and 3 fourths. Okay, whoops. That's a little bit off. Okay. G1, 16 and 3 fourths. Oh, it's a little bit off. Okay. G1 on this side is. Uh, 16, 7, 8, almost 17. Uh, yeah, that's right on the money. The G2 on that side is 22. I'll go down here, match it to the end, and as you can see, it's right at 22. So I can go through all my measurements like that. My G2 on this side. 
between two and three quarters. It's pretty close. A little bit off, maybe. Oh, okay, it's moving around. It's hard to get it just right. But that's how you do it. Make sure it's right in the middle before it gets too hard. Uh, that's kind of what you got going on. G222. Yeah, that one's on the money. And the G5 is like what? 14 and 7 eighths. Go down here and 14 and 7 eighths, roughly. Yeah, somewhere in that range. So that's how you do it. Now, what I like to do is kind of. I think about a lot of things. I look, I look down uh, when I'm trying to set the antlers. I look at it from underneath, make sure everything lines up. Um, look at it from the side, make sure the pitch lines up, you know, real good, like it's supposed to be. Um, even from the back, I look at the balance, make sure everything is like balanced real good, you know, where it's not not uneven or something, you know. So, uh, yeah, I take a lot of stuff into consideration uh, from the side. You know, just make sure he lines up all the way around. And, you know, you can tell by looking if they're crooked a little. So, you keep those in mind along with your dimensions. Now, I put the dimensions both on this side. Um, so I don't even have to go the other side. You know, it came in handy for the camera. So this is for the other side. Yeah, like right here, you can tell they're pretty well level. Um, you know, you can, yeah, you can tell if they're crooked by looking from the back. I do that a lot. Now with that, along with your math and all that stuff, it adds together, your deer is going to be set perfect. And, yep, you can't go wrong. Okay, uh, what I got here, uh, I'm going to drill holes for my screws. Uh, I, you know, I hadn't busted the bond, you know, the bondo from the cap yet. But I'll, uh... Put five is what I usually put. And you can kind of tell when you go through the skull cap for the you know, you can tell when you go through the skull cap, you'll hit the wood and you just kind of tap to make sure you're on the wood. And uh, so that's how that works. Then I'll come to the back. Then I'll put one in the center. through I put two in the front two in the back and one in the middle that's usually how I do it yeah these back ones are usually smaller shorter screws Then uh, I'll get like a real large drill bit or something to counter sink uh, for where the screw heads will go flush with the skull. You can either use a large drill bit or 
counter sinking stuff um, like that you know to just to counter sink so uh, you got options there um, but a big old drill bit of work just fine yeah the screw head just seat just perfect <laughs> And then I might do the middle one. And then... Don't even worry about the back ones because uh, there'll be clay covering all that and you'll never even notice it in the back, uh, on the back one. So it's great if the thread pitches go all the way up to the bottom of the screw, but if they don't, make sure that, you know, the thread pitch starts before it hits the, the wood. There's a little piece of wood in there. But yeah, I got longer screws for the front. And for the back, you know, I got the smaller screws, which is totally fine. I'll grab my drill bit. Whoops. Can I just get a drill? Cordless drill if you got one handy. And then, uh, Whoops. See how they sit flush with the skull cap? That's what you want. Then you take them right back out. So you've already made your pilot holes. And uh, if you had to sew the cape up the back, you could leave the antlers on. You know, if you get a cape that's been cut all the way down the back, uh, there's places out there that still do that. But if you don't like all that sewing and you skeet him out, you know, where you only cut down so far, then uh, you just pop the antlers off, slide your cape on, uh, put your antlers back on, and then uh, sew them up the back. So I take all my screws out. I've already started all my holes. And I usually have a favorite knife somewhere that I use to kind of bust the seam and take the antlers where they'll fall, pop off. And what I like to do is I like to kind of bust the seam so I get like a, I got a knife somewhere that doesn't have a handle on it. Uh, you know, it's just all metal. And, uh, I like to help it out. I, you know, kind of, kind of try to help it out. Here you go. What you do is uh, take the antlers off, mount your cape, put your antlers back on, shoot your screws back through there, tighten them down real good, and you've got uh, you got your mount done. You don't have to worry about sewing all the way down the cape. You take that off, slide it on like a sock, and uh, then reattach your antlers. That's how it's done.